How's it going? So I wanna highlight a trick I've done here on the channel a couple times, but I want to make a dedicated video just for this. So what we're gonna do today is make these two animations and the thing that makes them really cool, what helps the movement, is a really cool trick. The trick is using geometry that you created in geometry nodes, sending that information into the shading, and that allows you to randomize, in this case, a wave texture on that geometry to get this really cool 2D animation uh, look. So let's get into that. If you do want the project files, those are currently available on Patreon right now, along with a couple other new project files. I'll be making tutorials for all of those, and there's a lot of other tutorials on my Patreon if you wanna learn more about motion graphics using geometry nodes, but if you want to check out more of my exclusive stuff, that is linked in the description. All right, we are going to open up Blender 5.0, and so let's go ahead and set up a scene so that we can learn how to do this uh, gradient trick. So the first one we're going to do is the easier one. So we're going to get a plane. I'm going to hit tab, go over to the move tool. I'm going to hold down control and snap my anchor point to the direct bottom of the uh, my plane. So now what I'm gonna do is get the scale tool. We're out of edit mode now. Um, and I'm gonna scale this guy up to be somewhere around this. It does not need to be exact. I'm gonna hit control A, apply that scale, go back to edit mode and grab the edge, select this edge, hit S zero. So we're gonna bring that down um, to zero. And then I'm gonna move him, actually I'll just keep him there for now. And I'm gonna remove him from view up here in the outliner. I'm gonna hit Shift A and get another plane and we're gonna call this one Geo so we don't get it confused with our object. So I'm gonna to go to Geometry Nodes, get a new node tree, delete the input, and we're gonna get a Curve Circle. So Curve Circle, plug that there, and I'm gonna give myself a resolution of 32, which me I mean, sorry, 26, uh, which means we're gonna get 26 objects once we instance uh, that object that we just created. So what I'll do is I'll get a instance on points, and then I'm gonna go ahead here in the outliner and drag in that plane, and you can call it triangle if you want. Um, you could title it something. I'm gonna go plug geometry into instance, and they're all gonna be pointing the same direction, and you can't fix it uh, without adding a few nodes, well, two nodes. We're gonna type in, we're gonna hit shift A and search, align rotation to vector, and we need to say we want to align it based on the normal. So get a normal node, plug normal to vector, plug rotation to rotation, and then it looks like the X is the uh, right place to be. Now that we're here, let's go ahead and bring that object that we made back into view. I wanna do a few things. One, I wanna hit tab and then hit A so we have the full object selected. I'm gonna go to the move tool and move we're essentially moving our anchor point until all of these objects are um, touching. So I'm gonna go back to the move tool. I'm looking at until they're all touching like that. We want basically this solid middle. And then I'm gonna go back here, go back to the edge select, select this edge, and I'm gonna hit S until all of these guys are touching like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go now hide that plane again. We won't need to look at it anymore. So here, the, all right, so now we can start building the effect that this whole video is about. So I'm gonna go here to the material, click new, right here on principled, I'm gonna click on an emission node. We can just go here to the uh, material preview. I'm gonna get a set material node and geometry nodes and grab that emission. So if we go here to like the view, we can see it. We wanna be using Eevee. So I'm gonna go here to the camera icon, switch over to Eevee, and we can just use default settings, nothing super fancy at all. So we have an emission material, but now it just looks like a circle. We could have made a circle. So what we wanna do is be able to add, assign a random value for every one of these objects randomly. Uh, values can correlate to colors. So values one, zero, any uh, value in between those are shades of gray, and that's what we wanna see. So what we can do is get a store named attribute. What I want it to make an attribute for are the instances because we instanced uh, 26 objects here. And then you can use a noise texture if you want. I'm just gonna use a random value and I'm gonna plug value into value just like that. And then I'm gonna just title it R for random. And I'm gonna head into shading. So now we have our object. 
what we can do is hit or get a attribute node because we instance, we wanna use the instancer, we're gonna call R and we can plug into color just to make sure it works. And it does. We now have a random value assigned to every single one of these objects. Why is that important? Here's why this little trick is important. Let's go ahead. We'll get a wave texture, plug color into color. And then if we bring that scale up, we can obviously we can see this wave texture happening. I'm going to bring my world brightness to black now and just go to the EV view. I'm going to get a camera. You don't have to get a camera now if you don't want to. So now we have this. We have a big circle. And if we want to be nerdy, we can hit Control T at an object coordinate. It's going to behave a little differently. You can go ahead and select this object and then go from bands to rings X to spherical. And um, it's going to you can now not see all those little lines. So it's a little bit more perfect and that's what we want. Um, so what do I wanna do? I wanna randomize the phase offset for every one of these objects. And if that doesn't make any sense, if I just go ahead and plug factor into phase offset, it's going to do that. What it's doing is using the value system, the random values to move. So if we look at this, this is a value, this number that we're looking at. Zero is a value, one is a value. And so it's saying each one of these objects gets its own one of these. So if I plug factor right into that, it's gonna do that. And then we wanna get a math node and I want to make this effect a little bit more dramatic. So I'm gonna go here to a multiply and multiply this effect. But now I've lost the ability to animate the phase offset. If you get a multiply add, it gives you an addend, and so now we can animate this. So we can bring our scale really far down till it looks really cool, something like this. If we want to have some fun, we can add a color ramp and set it to B spline, and then bring that in so that we can get a much smoother gradient. And now we have this, and you can multiply in and out. If you bring the zero, that circles back to normal. And now we have this effect. We can go ahead and add a little bit of color to it so we can go and get two colors. I'm gonna say make this one kind of a tan color, make this one a nice deep blue, and then keep the black right over here. And then here's a fun trick. If you go to the compositor, if you are in 5.0, this will only work in 5.0, click new, drag in the sensor noise and bring up the luminance. And then we can go back to shading and check this out. I'm gonna hit this drop down and click always. And now we have this nice grainy look, and that's really fully kind of sends that uh, nice graphical look. All right, we're done here. Let's move on to the circular animation and do the same effect, um, but do it a little differently to show you other creative ways to do this. So we're gonna go a little quicker through that one. So you can save this project file, export it, do whatever you want. I am going to go ahead and start a new, I'm gonna go ahead and just delete everything in my outliner and we're going to start fresh. So I'm just delete everything and I'm going to go here to the geometry nodes workspace right here. I'm going to hit shift a, get a plane. And then here in geometry nodes, get a new tree. Again, we're going to go a little faster through this one. So we're going to get a grid and then I'm going to make this a little wider, a little taller. And then I'm going to do vertices of seven and four on the grid. We're going to do a instance on points. We're gonna do a mesh circle, specifically make sure you use a mesh circle. We're gonna plug here and here. Now we have these guys and I'm gonna bring my I'm gonna bring my vertices to like 82, make them really nice and smooth. And then you bring that radius down. So now we have a collection of circles and I'm gonna go from fill type to ingon. So now we have all of these circles. If you wanna see some things better, you can turn on cavity and outline. So now we have all of our circles. What I wanna do, notice they're intersecting. I'm just gonna bring up the rotation a little bit until they are looking like that. And then you can space out these circles however you want. Uh, I want them to be really tight in, something like this. I think that just looks really, really cool. So let's go ahead and create that same effect on the circles and then you can leave this tutorial if you want or we can continue and actually learn uh, how to kind of style this thing. So what we'll do is I'm gonna hit store named attribute. I'm gonna name it R. I wanna go instance. We're gonna get a random value. 
plug that there. We're going to get a store named attribute, get a new material. I'm going to set it to emission. Oops, sorry. Get a set material node, turn on that emission, and then we can switch over to shading, call that attribute, switch it to instancer, whatever you titled it, and then let's go ahead and throw a wave texture on these circles, just like that. And then we can bring up their scale. Nice, you can play with that phase offset. I'm gonna hit control T, get an object coordinate, and so that we can actually rotate these circles if we want to and make them do something like that. Again, bring the bigger that scale, the bigger that gradient, we're gonna get a color ramp, switch it to B spline and bring this to the middle so we can smooth out that gradient even more. So now it looks a little better. Now what we can do, see this rotation right here on the Z? Let's get a combine X, Y, Z so that we can plug something into any of these axes. So remember, we have a random value per every single one of these objects, which means we can have a random rotation per object. So if I plug factor into Z, and then I get that math node, switch it to multiply add, up the multiplier. So now when we play with this phase offset, they're going different directions. Now the only other thing I don't like is see how they all go black to white, black to white at the same time. We're gonna do what we just did and randomize the phase offset so they're the offset is at different positions per circle to make it look better. All we need to do is take these two nodes here. I'm just gonna bring them both to 0.5 for a default and plug that into the phase offset, bring up that multiplier. So now when we play with the add end, they're not behaving the same way at the same time. We can go ahead and just pick a color for these, something like this. We're gonna want this for the wireframe. So now we have this, we can, you can go home now. Uh, we're done making this look cool. We're kind of done with the tutorial, but we're going to add a little wireframe to make it look a, a bit better in the final. So what I'll do is go back to geometry nodes. I'm gonna go back to a flat view. And what I want to do is get a join geometry, plug this here. I want to go ahead and take this instance on points. I'm hit control shift D, plug this here. Now we have two of these uh, situations here. I'm gonna go from mesh to curve. So now we have an outline for each of them. We're gonna go to curve to mesh so we can actually create some geometry. So I'm gonna do a curve circle, resolution of six, plug that into the profile and then bring that radius down till we just have a nice outline. I'm gonna say probably 0 0.02. Oh, that's too big, 0 0.005. We'll do 0.002. We want the outline to be very thin. Let's go ahead and get a, another set material node up here. For that, we're gonna get a new emission material. We're gonna go to the render view and then go ahead and select that new emission so we can see the outline. Let's go back to shading and make sure that new material is selected. All we'll do is get a color ramp. We're gonna get a noise texture plug factor here, linear to B spline, we'll bring that to the middle and then plug this into color and we'll pick a very similar blue. We can even try to copy it. And then we'll get another node here, make it black so we can get more separation. So what I'm gonna do is bring the detail to zero, get my scale up. And then you'll notice, see the same effect as on all of these. It's duplicating this noise texture. So I'll hit control T object coordinate and then select the object so now it treats the whole thing a little bit better and there we go now we have these nice highlights that in the compositing if we can get a glare node set it to bloom it needs to go before the noise back to shading and then if we bring up the brightness we'll get some glowing so there we go that is how we create this really beautiful animation. You guys on Instagram really, really liked it, which I was surprised. Um, but this is it again in the shading. If you want to animate it, that is going to be multiply add. That is how we animate this guy. So there you go. That is how you use randomness on the phase offset on the scale on, on really anything you want to play with, uh, and get some really cool motion graphics effects. So, 
feel free to use this for whatever you want. Check out the project files on Patreon and all the other exclusive content on there. You can join that today, linked in my bio. Uh, but that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.